Hi everyone, thanks so much for being here. My name is Kat and I make houseplant videos here on Good and Planty. If you just so happen to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. I have a stain on my shirt. <laughs> trying to hide it. All right, if you're watching this video, you probably know how fun plant shopping can be. You walk into the nursery and you're just hit with plants. You're hit with so many beautiful, beautiful plants. Sometimes a little quirky plant jumps out to you and that's okay, that's so fun. Plant rescues are fun. But if you wanna skip certain stressors <laughs> after taking a new plant home, you should definitely pay attention to the tips that I'm gonna share in today's video. There are gonna be five tips and I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right Right into it. So I'm gonna start off with the obvious one and kind of like knock it out of the way. You want to immediately, if you're not there for a plant rescue, just wipe out the ones that do not look good. Like the no picks, the obvious ones, the ones with yellow leaves. Maybe they look just kind of sad. Just don't, just don't go for them <laughs> if you're looking for an easy plant. Instead, pay close attention to plants that look established, look full, and most importantly, have signs of new growth coming in. That can be a new sheath, it can be tiny little leaves that you can tell are slowly growing in, the plant can be flowering. All of those signs are typically ones that mean that the plant is healthy and will have a better chance of easily acclimating to your home once you bring it in. No plant is gonna be perfect in the nursery. I want to like nip that assumption. You know, there's probably gonna be a leaf tear, maybe one or two yellow leaves. That's just part of bringing nature into your home. But if you're looking for the healthiest plant, definitely make sure that you're looking for signs of a happy plant, which again are those new leaves, new growth, all of that. Okay, with that out of the way, let's move to tip number two, and that is gonna be to check for pests. And this is one that I think people talk about, it seems obvious, but when I was getting into plant care, I had no idea what that meant. Like, I knew to be looking for pests, but I didn't really know what the pests looked like, I didn't know where to look on the plant for them. I would do a quick once over and think that it's pest free, bring it home, and then I have like spider mites or something. I do wanna break this down a little bit more than just saying check for pests. <laughs> okay, I have such short hair and I'm trying to like clip it into, I'm trying to do a little ponytail. Come on. Some specific things to look for, and this will unfortunately not be all inclusive, but I did wanna run through some of the more obvious pests that you can find. So some things to look for are mealybugs, which are little white fuzzy bugs that are kind of cute, kind of gross, I don't know. And it looks a little bit like cotton. If you don't see like the actual mealybug, you might see, I think that like the little cotton looking things that they leave are their eggs. If you see webbing, which this can be a little bit confusing, but if you see webbing, that may mean spider mites. So again, stay away from the plant. Jonah and I, we were obviously, you're seeing the B-roll that I got at the nursery and I wasn't expecting to buy any plants. I just wanted to film some examples for all of you, but Jonah found a string of pearls plant that he fell in love with and he likes plants, he appreciates plants, but he doesn't really get super enthusiastic when we're plant shopping. So when he told me that he liked a string of pearls and he wanted it, I was like, done deal, done deal. Like I'll get it for you. Like this is it, I'll take care of it. I'm so excited that you're excited. Like we're getting the plant. And sure enough, we found webbing in the string of pearls and I, really wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt. I was like, maybe it's just like a, a regular spider that got into the plant. But this is kind of like how I thought about it to make the decision to not pick up the plant. I didn't, it's hard to see the actual spider mites climbing around the leaves. So I didn't see an actual spider mite, which made me hopeful. But when I looked at the rest of the string of pearls that were available, they all had similar webbing, which made it a little bit less believable to me that it's just like a few spiders making all of this and not a spider mite infestation that got in the whole batch. That's how I made that judgment call. When I see webbing, I'm kind of turned away. I just want to be super cautious, even if it's just a harmless spider. The way that spider mites web is a little bit unique, but if you're a beginner, it can be kind of hard to spot. They like to really web around the lobes of a leaf. They like to web Kind of like if the leaf dips a little bit, you'll see some webbing kind of like connecting the two upsides. This is, I'm explaining it horribly. There is like a very thin specific kind of webbing that comes from spider mites and 
just stay away. You don't wanna bring spider mites into your home. So unfortunately we turned on the plant. And lastly, look for like, um, like little tiny like buggy, like black dark bugs just crawling around the leaves. They could be thrips. Um, I, I can't think of all the pests, but there's tons of, of bugs that can live on a plant. And it's hard to kind of get into it and know exactly what you're looking for until you experience a pest. But those are kind of some visuals that I hope help you when you're looking for pests on a plant. And if you wanna be super extra and you really wanna like check the plant, you can take your flash, your phone flashlight and put it on the underside of the leaf and slowly like run it across the leaf and it will make it a little bit more obvious if there is a bug on the, on the plant. Make sure that you're checking around the lobes around the petioles uh, and the undersides of the leaves and also a lot of pests like new growth. So those are some specific spots to check when you're looking for pests in your plant. And I still recommend always isolating a new plant once you bring it to your house because even if you check, you never know, you never know. Tip number three, three, why can I never do the Okay, <laughs> tip number three is to check the roots of the plant. I would say the first thing that I look for for this tip is to see if the roots are growing out of the bottom of the pot through the drainage holes. If you see that, then you need to make sure that you are buying a pot for this plant. Unless it's an emergency, I still don't recommend repotting your plant until it's had about two weeks to settle into your home and adjust before you mess with its root system. But I would still buy the pot just so that you're ready to repot it when your plant is ready. So for example, I found a Syngonium that was outgrowing its three and a half inch nursery pot. So if I were to buy that plant and bring it home, I would make sure that I have at least a four inch, but maybe like a five inch pot if you can find one to repot that plant when it's ready. Also for the roots, I recommend you look at the health of the roots. This is a, a tricky tip. If you're feeling like it's appropriate to do so, you can kind of like wiggle the plant out of the nursery pot and take a look at the roots, but I'm... I don't know how I feel about recommending that because some nurseries may really like not like that. I think Home Depot would be a little bit chiller because they don't really care about their plants. But just do your best and what you think is appropriate to check on the health of the root system. So if it's poking out of the bottom, it should be pretty easy. They're either gonna look like a light, healthy, thick color, thick color. They're either gonna look uh, light in color and thick and healthy and strong, or they're gonna be very stringy and black and dark, which, you know, maybe that's not a healthy root system. If you can't look at the root system, then again, you can just look at the foliage, going back to tip number one. And if the foliage is healthy, odds are the root system is fine. Tip number four is to compare the amount of propagations in one pot. So this is something that I didn't even think about when I first started buying plants, is that I think we always think of one pot equals one plant, but more, with a lot of different kinds of plants, specifically vining plants like philodendron um, and certain pothos, there are multiple cuttings and plants in one pot. If I've narrowed down some plants and I'm between two decent healthy looking choices, I will see like how many plants are in one pot. A lot of nurseries and growers are really good at making sure that all four inch pots will have like three cuttings or something like that. But sometimes you can kind of tell that one plant is a little bit more bare than the other. For example, I found a Tradescantia Sabrina at the nursery I was at and one clearly had like one or two propagations in it while a lot of the other plants had you know, maybe like at least five, I'm guessing here. While both of those plants look really healthy and great, obviously one is gonna look a little bit fuller over time than the other. If you're kind of between some plants, I would kind of look into the pot a little bit and see how many cuttings or crowns, if you're looking at something like a peace lily, are in one pot. Okay, and the last tip I wanna share with all of you is to do really, really quick plant care research. Sometimes we're in the nursery, we see a plant, this has happened to me many times, and I'm like, I don't care what is involved for this plant, like I'm bringing it home, I don't care, I'm in love. And that's totally fine. I have learned so much about plants by doing that, by just taking a jump, taking a little risk, bringing a plant home and slowly learning about it. But what I do recommend is if you're someone that is new to plants and don't want it to stress you out, you wanna feel confident right off the bat, you 
want it to look good in your home like you're less about the experimentation of plants and you just want to bring a plant home you want to be successful at it and you want it to look healthy in your space that you've chosen for that plant plant research is absolutely necessary and it does not have to be intense it does not have to be watching one of my 10 minute long 20 minute long plant care guides it could literally just be a quick google search on your phone look at the label see what kind of plant name it is type it into google and then just do a quick like light water um, and humidity read because from that information you can really tell if it's going to match up with the amount of time you have for plant care and if it's gonna actually do well and look good in the space that you have in mind so this tip is definitely a flexible one and it's not for everyone I don't always follow it but it's one that I definitely recommend for someone that is new to plants and wanting to build confidence in plant care okay so that's gonna be it for today's video thank you all so much for watching. I hope these tips were helpful because I think that sometimes when you walk into a nursery, it can get really overwhelming with the amount of plants there are, how many choices you have. So I hope that this helped a little bit with clarifying like how to pick that perfect plant. Please subscribe to my channel if you don't already and want to see more planty content from me. Please like this video, comment down below some tips or mistakes that we can all learn from. Please click the notification bell, check out my merch, follow me on Instagram, all that good stuff, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!